We serve a great God. Come on, let me hear you say amen if you believe that. We serve a mighty God, a great God, a powerful God. And I'm just so thankful to be on his team this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Is uh, There he is back there. Uh, man, before we get into the word today, I just want to give God some praise and give God a shout out because uh, I got a, I got a text message uh, last, was that earlier this week? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, my brother. Sitting back there. I'm talking to a pastor. I'm talking to the pastor, Pastor Ray in the back. Pastor Ray accepted a call to go pastor in San Diego, California with his family. And so, man, look, we just want to congratulate you. Look, before we before we get into the word, when when do you leave? When do you guys leave? In March. Oh, okay. So we got some time to celebrate with you. Hang on, and we, we got some time to get our uh, roof fixed. If you need your roof fixed, call Ray. He'll do it for free. He'll do your plumbing for free. He'll do you. <laughs> Praise God, man. No, we celebrate with you, though, man. We celebrate with you and your family, and uh, we'll definitely make sure that we. Uh, spend some time uh, just you know we want to give you your flowers man before we leave and so uh, but, we, but we're excited for you man we're excited for you and your family we praise God praise God listen we're going to get into the word today we also want to thank God today is communion Sabbath amen somebody we get the honor and privilege of celebrating communion partaking uh, in communion on this Sabbath morning and so we're going to uh, share a word and then we're going to transition for our communion uh, at Harbor of Hope We also do what we call the ordinance of foot washing. It's not just Harbor of Hope, but uh, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians We do not only the uh, Communion emblems partaking of those emblems, but we also do the ordinance of humility, which is which is the washing of the feet uh, uh, as Jesus did to his did with his disciples, and so look, we're gonna get into the word today. And our scripture reading is found in Luke. It's found in Luke chapter eleven, verse five through thirteen. The Bible says in verse five, then Jesus said to them, his disciples, that is, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me. And I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Yes. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Now, the English language and my education wants me to title this sermon something different. But because I'm from the hood, uh, I decided to title this message, I ain't got it, but I got a homeboy that do. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to say thank you for being such a good God. We want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in this space one more time. Father, I'm praying right now that you would quiet our spirit. Lord, I'm praying right now that you would 
destroy everything that is trying to distract us from this moment so that our hearts can receive this word Lord I'm asking that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight and encouraging to your people it is in Jesus name that we pray let everybody who believes say amen, amen. and amen I ain't got it but I got a homeboy that do listen there is a common courtesy there's a common courtesy in our culture today in our society today that you don't call somebody's house after a certain time there's a there, there's a courtesy that you don't even text somebody's house or text somebody after a certain time period what time would you say that is Nine o'clock, ten o'clock. He say twelve. <laughs> Here's the thing: it depends on who the person is. It depends on the level of friendship that you have with that individual. So there's a there's a there's a general rule, and then there's a friendship rule. Because I can text my brother, it don't matter what time of night. Now, whether he respond is a different question. He might be asleep. Right? But there's a, there's a common courtesy uh, that, that is, that is uh, common to everybody. That there's this idea that we have that, man, look, there's certain, you know, you, you, you just don't call. And you better not show up at somebody's house. At a time where most people are sleeping. But not so in this story. You see, Jesus is giving his disciples an answer to a question that they had because the disciples had overheard Jesus pray. And they were so uh, uh, enamored by what they heard as Jesus was praying and that the disciples asked him, they said, man, Lord, teach us how to pray. John taught his disciples how to pray. Will you teach us how to pray? And so Jesus in the first uh, four verses gives the disciples what we know to be the Lord's prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever somebody say Amen. and after Jesus gives them that uh, that prayer pattern if you will after Jesus gives them that prayer pattern he goes into this parable to make it plain to him and in the parable, are we gonna, we're going to break this down for a moment here. Uh, in this parable, you will see a couple of things happening in Luke number 11. The first thing that I need you to understand inside of this parable is that Jesus is describing this man. He says, suppose one of you actually, you have a friend and you go to your friend uh, at, uh, at midnight and you say to your friend, let me give you, let me give you, let me give you the point real quick. Let me give you the point first and then we're going to get into the text, all right? The point that I need you to get first and foremost, brothers and sisters, is that uh, 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 this parable teaches the reality of our insufficiency. It teaches the reality of our insufficiency. I'm going to say it one more time. It teaches the reality of your insufficiency. Here's what I mean by that. Look at what the text says. The text says, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. Oh, I got to make it plain this morning because y'all sleep. <laughs> you that friend who sleep. <laughs> Let me make it plain to you this morning. He says, uh, 
I have no food to offer my friend. In other words, here is a person now who comes to the realization that he does not have what the person who, uh, who has come to him is in need of. In other words, he is insufficient. Can I tell you something real quick? Uh, I've come to a place in my life that I don't have what it takes to be a good father. I don't have what it takes to be a good husband. I don't have what it takes to be a good pastor. I don't have what it takes to be a good leader. I don't have what it takes. I'm insufficient in and of myself. I don't have what it takes to be wealthy. I don't have what it takes to be healthy. You don't have what it takes to lose weight. Come on. Come on. You don't have it. And the moment you get to the realization that you don't have what you need in order to be who God calls you to be, you get to a point where you stop depending on your own sufficiency and you start calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, you go to the friend, you can say, I don't have it, but I got a homeboy. That's right. <laughs> I know somebody that does. Your insufficiency, hear me now. Your insufficiency, when you come to the grips of it, when you come to grips with it, you don't have everything that it takes to be who God has called you to be. And the reality is, is that the reason why we know that, hear me, the biggest proof, help me Jesus, the biggest proof that you don't have what it takes to be who God has called you to be is your own inconsistency. Is your own lack of discipline. Is your own declarations out of your own mouth of stuff that you say you're going to do, stuff that you say you do that that, that, that you want, but you don't put forth the action to do it. Because you have insufficient funds. Anybody ever had an overdraft fee? Come on, tell the truth for saying it. You swipe that card. You 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 at the, come on you at the you at the you at the checkout line hoping and praying. Please don't let this thing decline. You got all these groceries, line super long, folk looking at you. You at the altar, oh Lord. Please. And sometimes it hasn't gone through. And, they, and you got that negative thing. You, you know, you, you, you get these overdraft fees now. That's because you're drawing on something that's not there. Preach, Pop. Preach. See, it's hard to be patient with people, to be kind to people, to be loving towards people. When you don't have something, when you haven't been making any deposits. See, when you make spiritual deposits... When trials come, when challenges come, when people get all in your face and they talking crazy to you, you have something to pull from. Yes. But when you are insufficient, when you are relying, hear me now, when you're relying on your own sufficiency, you go bankrupt real quick. But when you come to the realization that I don't have it, I don't, I don't have what it takes. I don't have what it takes to be a great man of God. I don't have what it takes to have a strong prayer life. Like in and of myself, I just don't have it. But like this guy, he knew somebody who did. And so the first thing, hear me, the, the first thing I need us to understand today is that, is that, is that if, if we're going to be all that God created us to be. If we're going to experience the fullness of God's favor, we got to come to grips with our own insufficiency, our own uh, lack, our own uh, uh, do not have. We got to we have we we, we have to embrace that. I don't, I I really I don't have it in and of myself. I don't have it, but I know someone who does. Come on, say amen, somebody. Now watch this, watch this. The text says, the text says, the second thing you don't understand. Uh, this is what I love. Uh, uh, the text teaches the priority of intercessory. Listen, have anybody ever felt like you're praying something, but uh, it's just not going through? God hasn't heard your prayer yet, anybody? 
You ever, you, ever, you ever experienced that? You've been praying for something and it hasn't. Man, God, you know. But let me tell you something. When you look in the Bible, the prayers that tend to get answered the most are the prayers that we pray for other people. See, 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 when you when you are interceding, when you are asking God to do a great and mighty work on behalf of somebody else, that doesn't mean that God is not interested in your prayers. But 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 I, I there's something that I've learned about God over the years that God favors people who are looking to be a blessing. More than they're looking to be blessed. That in fact, there is a there is a law in life. In fact, it's in scripture. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. He or she who refreshes others shall themselves be refreshed. I had a professor tell me one time to go to that professor again. I had a professor tell me one time. He said, he said, he said, Taurus, if you ever want to be in a place where you always have shoes, start giving shoes away. Amen. That's true. That's true. There's a young man. He just he just won the uh, MLK Spirit Award. He attends Andrews University. He's from he's from Benton Harbor, born and raised here in Benton Harbor. I didn't even I didn't know that he made it to that that he uh you know was a student at Andrews until I was at this MLK breakfast last whatever that was in January earlier early early earlier this month right. So he won this award and then last night I preached at this event uh on the campus of Andrews and he was there and I saw him. I'm, hey man, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Blah blah. And he told me that uh that he was a student. I mean I, I said I didn't know you was a student here at Andrews. He said, yeah, man. He said, I got a full scholarship. Oh, wow. I said, Andrew, do that. <laughs> he said he got a full scholarship. He got a full scholarship for his leadership and service in the community. Wow. I said, boy, go ahead on up. When I first met this kid, he was probably 16, 17 years old. I was coming outside of the uh, uh, Ben Harbor City Hall. Uh, me and the police chief was just standing there. We were talking. He came up and he introduced himself. I thought he was probably 35 years old. Wow. <laughs> Carries himself with great maturity, articulate. I'm talking about just good, good, good guy. And I, I just knew that this man, this kid going somewhere. But this is what he did. This is what he was doing at the time, right? He said that he takes his camera with him and he was going. This was this is one of the many things that he was doing. He goes to restaurants and eat food there and I think they give him the food for free because he's going to do a review on his camera put it on Facebook and all that and people are not getting free publicity wow nice. so if you know if you want if you want a free meal <laughs> go to the people yes sir hey I just want to taste your give me give me your best stuff that you got this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go online uh, this is absolutely free I'm gonna promote it talk about how good it is and so on and so forth here's the principle guy the principle is if you focus on blessing other people yeah. God will make sure that you bless yes. that's the principle stop playing stop praying for a blessing and start praying to be a blessing. Amen. And you will get a blessing. Amen. This man understood this. So he is asking. He is interceding. I want to challenge us in 2023. To stop praying so much for yourself. Stop praying for your own issue. Stop praying for your own problems. Stop praying for your own financial struggles. Stop praying for your own relationship problems. I want you to start focusing on being a blessing to somebody else. I thought I'd get more amens than that. Maybe you ain't like that. You don't want to be praying for your own relationship problem. Look. <laughs> what? Oh, Lord. What are you Let me tell you how to fix that. Let me tell you how to fix that. Let me tell you how to fix that. I want you to start praying for that, that, that person that you're interested in 
or that, 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 that spouse that you have that's getting on your nerves, I want you to spend more time praying to God for them rather than talking to them about the problem. Y'all just missed what I just said. You just missed what I just said. I just gave you the recipe to a happy relationship. Here's what I noticed. Here's what I noticed. What I notice is that when I have a problem with my wife, she ain't here right now. She might be, she might be watching on TV right now. She, she not feeling well. But, but I love you, babe. Um, but here's what I want you to get. Here's what I want you to get. What I want you to get is that when, 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 when we, you know, in the first year of our marriage, first two years of our marriage, she was like, that, that, that's the worst part of our marriage. We've been every, everything after that been marital bliss. Praise God. Uh, but, but in that first. Because we, were, we had conflicting expectations. Mm -hmm. She was expecting one thing, I was expecting one thing. And those two things weren't expecting each other. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I learned. Was when I started going to the Lord and start praying to God for her. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm praying for the things that she's asking God to do in her life. Yes. I'm praying for God to lead her and bless her and give her wisdom. And I'm not focusing on what I want her to do for me. Yeah. All right. All right. What happens is God begins to turn our own hearts yes. to be more receptive and more understanding yes. Come on. to the other person's expectations. Yes. See, this is what intercessory. Look, it, 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 it's not just, see, a lot of times we think intercessory prayer is only praying for somebody to be saved. Right. That, that, hallelujah. We want, we want folk to be saved, but it's it, it, in principle, it is simply praying for somebody else. Mm. What all, every aspect of their life, every issue that they have, hear me now. It's not simply, I'm praying that this person will get baptized and join the church. No, 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 that's, that's, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Right now, I'm praying that that, 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 that person's attitude about God will shift. I'm praying that that person can get a job because I know that they don't have the financial resources to take care of their family. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. There's something that, 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 that moves the heart of God when you start praying for other people. Mm. And God begins to make you a conduit. Of, of blessing. Here's the text. The Bible says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, and this is for somebody else. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. The third one, guys. The third one. Now, this is the point. This is the key point that Jesus is trying to make in this parable. And this is talking about the necessity of shameless audacity. The necessity of shameless audacity when you pray. You don't have, you know, so, so the word audacity, it's like, man, when you have, you just, you got, you, you mean, you come to my house at midnight? <laughs> That's the first, like, bro. Now you got to understand, in this time, there wasn't a three bedroom house. My whole family is in one room. Yeah. Including the cows and the donkeys. Come on now. We all sleep. <laughs> and you come ringing my doorbell <laughs> at midnight. Come on. Okay, bro. When when did the guy show up at your house? <laughs> Up early in the day, but you wait all the way till midnight to come to my house and ask me. Right. Like this can't wait till in the morning. But this is shameless audacity. Like I ain't got no shame. I'm look. This my I'm by. Now here's what you gotta understand too. The, the, the other thing that I like about this the, 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 the character, right? The character who going at midnight. 
That's a real friend. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you're the other guy who came to the house, if you came to his house, and he don't have no bread, you know, oh man, my home, look, this is my guy right here, he gonna find a way. Right. He gonna go to his other friend at midnight and he convenience him for my convenience. That's right. I wanna be, I want that kind of friend in my life. I don't know about you. You see, you see, let's, let's look at this shameless audacity for a moment. Look at what, the Bible says, and suppose uh, the, one, the one inside the house answers, look, don't bother me. That's some of y'all right there. Yeah. Don't bother. You ain't even coming to the door. You ain't even coming to the door. Phone ring, pass me. You ain't even looking at the phone. You ain't care who it is. The door is already locked. And my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Now watch Jesus. Watch what he says. He says, I tell you. Even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship. Let me tell you something. There are some things that even your best of friends just ain't going to do for you. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Absolutely. Even your best of friends, your best of your BFF. <laughs> they just not going to do for you. There are times when the folks that you thought you could rely on, when you were going through your hard times, you were there for them. But when you were going through your experience, they didn't show up for you. They didn't let you borrow their car. They didn't let you stay at their house. They didn't loan you the few dollars that you loaned them. There are some people. They're not going to show up for you. Like you show up for them. But Jesus says, there's an answer for that. Jesus says, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. That friend I just finished talking about, he was amen. You didn't have shameless audacity when you were talking to him and asking for it. Why? Because we don't want, we don't, I, I, ain't, finna, I ain't finna be begging nobody. If he ain't gonna help me, then he ain't gonna help me. G said, uh huh. This brother right here, he ain't care. Let me tell you something. When I was in college, man, look, we raised a whole lot of money. Man, we raised a lot of money. We raised a lot of money. High school, high school, college students, 19, 20, 18, 18 through 22, 23. First of all, you young and you dumb. You don't know no better. I, I was that way. I'm, I, don't be offended by what I'm telling you. It's a good thing. You have a, you have a, you have a, a beautiful naiveness about yourself that allows you to be shameless with audacity <laughs> like real talk I would I would I remember one time uh we went to this ministers meeting I'm talking about these are these are big wigs in Baptist churches Pentecostal churches AME churches you know these are big wigs they up in there Al Sharpton and Freddie Haynes and uh, 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 a whole, whole bunch of these big wig guys. We out in Texas. Me and you know, in the group naps I was with, we just rolled up in there like we own the joint. <laughs> I remember taking the stage, just standing on the stage, and just like demanding that they give us some money because we trying to go overseas and do this mission trip. I'm talking about I, I'm naive as I don't know what. Come on, come on. And we walked out of there with some checks. going to one church we get out and we all just kind of everybody just you know we used to we used to just get out of the van just pile and just go walk in this big old group like we gang banging or whatever but 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 one of the leaders said hey guys listen this time when we go in we're gonna stand up we're gonna line up two by two walking in now he's gotta understand we unannounced don't nobody know we coming to this church 
Some, I, I, I don't know. It, First Church of God in Christ on whatever street. This is in, uh, I think we were in Arkansas. We just lined up. Now here's what happened. We don't know. The, we don't even know the pastor's name. Wow. Wow. We don't know nobody at this church. But we lined up two by two. And the church members are pulling up this Sunday morning. They're pulling up. And as they're pulling up, this one, this lady, uh, she see us. She said, y'all doing a presentation today? <laughs> We said, absolutely. <laughs> Let me take you to the pastor. So we go to the pastor. The past, We all lined up. Look, we, I'm looking good. Shirt, shirts tucked in. Khaki pants. Blue shirt. Looking like we belong there. Right. <laughs> we tell them who we are, what we do. We say, look, we want to we wanna sing a song for you. We, we start singing the African song. His heart just melt. He can't believe these young black boys and girls are here. Wow. What y'all need? Right. That oh, we just need 10 minutes. In front of your congregation, we're going to show a video. And then after that, we're going to ask for some donations. Okay. We walk out of church $10,000. Wow. <laughs> wow. Shameless audacity. Shame, like... No, we 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 mean no, sir. <laughs> there are children over there who are starving. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> we not gonna leave here until you give us some time, Pastor. Right. Aren't you a man of God? Oh. Oh. Look, this was. A, I'm gonna tell y'all. This was the strategy right here, right? The, the strategy was, we used to do this the police too. The strategy was, police wouldn't shoot people like that back in the day then. I don't know what's going on. Maybe there was, but it was, it was all right. Anyway, shout out to our police. That's a whole other story. That was another sermon for another day. But look, this is what we used to do though, right? So we would have the youngest person, 18, but we had 18 year olds. You know, when you add minutes, you 18, you look like you 12. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. A vegetarian meat, maybe. <laughs> but look, this is what we used to do, though, right? right? Now, I could be the leader of the group. Yeah. I'm leading out. I'm the point man. Okay? I'm telling everybody what to do, giving directives and all that. But when somebody in authority like the police show up, we send the 18-year-old who looked 12. <laughs> So we walking down the street, we canvassing, making all kind of noise. Drum, boom, boom. All, somebody call the police because they see this and they hear this sound coming out from, 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 uh, from, from outside. They don't know what's going on. Some people come out, they dance and they give us money and so on and so forth. Somebody mad, you know, they want to call the police on us or whatever. Police show up. I ain't talking to them. We're going to put the 12-year-old 12, 12 looking one. And she's just going to be talking just like... Yeah, sure, absolutely. You know, saying all, just like acting, playing dumb. And then the moment, and now we still going, we still band, boom, band still, we still canvassing, still talking to people, still collecting money. And then, uh, Mr. Officer, uh, do you do any community service? There are starving children in Africa. <laughs> starving children in Africa and God called us to go and serve them. So we get about an extra 20, 30 minutes praying with the police officer when it's all said and done. Shameless audacity. So here's what happens though. What happens is as you get older, you ain't trying to be, you got too much, you, like, you, you, yeah. I ain't finna. That pride kick in. And now you got too, you got too much pride to be. Come on. Jesus says, because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. I need to wrap this thing up, guys. But here's the point that Jesus is trying to make. What Jesus is trying to make is that, listen to me, when it comes to the friend who's inside the house, God is the opposite. Come on. Preach. 
Jesus is not saying that God that you, that, 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 that you go you that you have to uh, 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 try to twist God's arm and that and, and that you gotta uh, uh, you know uh, uh, try to try to try to pull it out of God no 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 God is the opposite in other words you got to catch this in other words uh, God what Jesus is saying is that God he wants you to ask him he wants you to keep on seeking he wants you to keep on knocking but unlike the friend who is unwilling God is willing to give you what you ask for Ah, I love it I love it I love it you see God is on the inside of the house uh, but he's not taking a nap uh, the Bible says that we serve a God who never sleeps uh, and never slumbers uh. you can knock at midnight you can knock in the afternoon uh. you can knock at 3 o'clock uh. you can knock in the evening time uh. it doesn't matter what time you knock uh. God will not only open the door and answer the, uh, answer the door but he will open up the windows of heaven and uh, pour out blessings uh. there's not enough room for you to receive you see God he wants to test uh, sometimes he wants to test your your commitment to the thing that you're praying about because he says keep on asking yes. keep on knocking for those who ask receive for those who knock the door will be open ah you gotta hear what I'm saying for those who seek they will find So when it comes to your prayer life, you got to receive this word. Take this word with you. I say to you, ask and it will be, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. For the one who finds, and to the, uh, I'm sorry, for the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, ah, oh, I love it. Jesus is rebuking them and blessing them at the same time. He said, which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, Will you give him a snake instead? Uh -huh. If he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Ah, uh -huh. uh, if you then, like, you evil. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Come on now. Right. Jesus call him evil. Uh -huh. yeah. And encourage him at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you are evil, selfish, yeah. self-centered, yeah. low down. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. If you know how to give your child what they are asking for, when they're asking for it, ah, hallelujah. How much more will your father in heaven give the greatest gift of all, the Holy Spirit, to those who ask him? Here's what I need you to do today. What I need you to do today, hear me, hear me. I need you to commit for 2023. I need you to commit to praying and asking for the Holy Spirit every single day. Come on. Yeah. Every day, you're asking for the Spirit. Why? Because you are not sufficient on your own. You need help. That's why Jesus called the Holy Spirit the helper. <laughs> You need help. I need help. If anybody want to acknowledge right now in the name of Jesus, you're saying, God, I know, I realize, I, I've come to realize my own insufficiency, God, and I want to depend on you. I've come to realize the importance of interceding on behalf of others. And Lord, I need you to give me shameless audacity in my prayer life uh, to the point where I will come boldly to the throne of grace uh, and I'll keep on coming and I'll keep on coming and I'll keep on asking God, not because I have to beg you or twist your arm, but because the, pre the, 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 the consistent prayers, uh, it does something to me, it changes me, it transforms me. If that's anybody's desire today, would you just raise your hand? God, give me that. I need that in my life, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are grateful. We're thankful, Lord. We are honored. We appreciate the fact that you have given us this parable, oh God, that teaches us how to go about praying in a way that will get the Father in heaven to bless us with the gifts to be a blessing to others. And Father, we're praying right now, oh God, for our own prayer lives. Lord, we're praying for faith and fervor in 2023, God. We're praying, Lord Jesus, that nothing will stand in the way of us sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to your words. We're praying, oh God, that even right now we will renew 
our commitments to our devotional time, oh God. Father, if there's anything that we need to prioritize in 2023, it is our commitment to the secret place of the Most High. So bless us, Lord, to that end. And now, God, as we prepare ourselves for the ordinance of humility and partaking in Holy Communion, we pray, oh God, that the same Spirit who has been present here with us will be with us as we go into these things. We love you, God. We thank you. And Lord, I cannot conclude this service without asking, maybe there's a young man, a young woman. Maybe there's a young boy, a young girl. Maybe there's somebody in the house of God today. You heard the voice of God speaking to you and you want to give your life to Jesus because you've come to realize that in and of yourself, you can't make it. Maybe somebody says, listen, I want... I want to give my heart to God. I want to give my heart to God for the first time. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or maybe somebody says, look, I want to be prepared for the next baptism. I want to get baptized. I want to join the church. The, the doors of the church are open. The house of God is here for you to go to the next level in your relationship with God. I see your hand, sister. I see your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Is there somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else. Father, you see the hands that have been raised. And we're praying right now for those individuals to walk in the newness of life that comes with Jesus Christ. Bless them, guide them, and keep them. And be with us, oh God, as we continue to serve you and worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you, God. We praise you. We thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, let everybody who believes shout amen. amen. Come on, amen. And amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this place, for he is worthy to be praised.